Yes, let's go to part two of this video, the teardown of the oxygen concentrator. I had the two oxygen concentrators. The one I made a video of uh, part one is right there. And this is the other one I got. This is totally stripped down. All the plastic casing is removed. Here we got the sieve bed. We got this compressor here with a dryer filter, I think. I hacked on a pressure gauge, so we can just have a look on the pressure. We've got the controlling circuit board up here. We got a oxygen sensor down here. We got this flow meter. We got the nine volt battery, and we got a how long this unit has been turned on meter. If I look on the compressor here, it's supposed to be a pressure. Uh, a relief valve here if the pressure gets too high it will like blow out and here's a rather large uh, sieve bed we will take apart all of this the sieve bed maybe the dryer filter maybe the oxygen sensor and look how they work yes on the compressor here we got this HEPA filter and on the output here we got another filter which is used for stopping uh, bacteria and uh, viruses and so on and of course, we should not forget the squirrel cage fan. So let's turn it on and see what happens. I adjust the flow here a bit, like 2 liters per minute. And the compressor is very shaky. Look at that gauge there. It's dropping back and forward, it's on the two bars, a little bit more than two bars, actually. You can see how it's jumping very violently. So I'm actually burning myself on that, so let's turn it off. Yeah, so got a pressure of like a little bit more than 0 0.5 bars there. And we still got something on the output. Let's do a oxygen test. You can see how good that burns. Oh no, no. <laughs> Holy sh! Here you can see how dangerous that is to play with oxygen. I burnt my filter actually, look at that. That's very dangerous. Do not have matches near oxygen. So yes, I think that's a good oxygen test. So let's begin taking stuff apart. So yes, I take, took it to bits a little bit. Most of this is unnecessary, like all these wires and tubes and stuff. So we can actually go and remove that, like this. And now we are left with the interesting stuff. Yes, let's begin with how old, uh, how many time, how many hours this unit has been turned on. 30,000 hours. It's a little bit less than the previous one. And here's the flow meter. It's a little ball in that. Nothing special. And here's the main circuit board. We've got some kind of regulator here. We've got the op amp. We've got a programmable ship here, a big buzzer, a pressure sensor, a transformer, some fuse, and some connectors here for oxygen sensor and different uh, parts of the unit. And we've got these LEDs here, indicator LEDs. That's the unit is turned on, the unit gives out oxygen, the unit gives out too little oxygen, I think, and some warning light. And on this circuit board, we got the oxygen sensor and the controller for the oxygen sensor, and we got a, I think it's a 5 volt regulator, that is. Yes, uh, 7805 is a 5 volt regulator. The cables here. And let's have a look inside of this oxygen sensor and see how it looks like later. So let's begin to have a look at this compressor here. 
It's a uh, thing made in the USA. You want a rather big flywheel. And it should be a pressure relief valve here, but I put a pressure gauge here instead. So I'm going to open this lid off and have a look inside. We've got some uh, Torx screws on it. They're pretty stuck. Pretty stuck screws. And yes, here we go. We've got this very thin metal here. We've got some kind of mark there. I don't know how that happened. And here's the piston. I'm gonna rotate this thing here. Oh, look at that, that jumps out a pretty long way. Yeah, so that's a pretty big uh, piston. We've got one of these, one more valve here. They're very thin. So we've got a ceiling around it. When it goes down, it, it, it puts, pulls the air up this direction from this uh, HEPA filter here. And when it goes up, it compresses the air. And it goes through these valves here. Or maybe it's in the middle. Yes, yeah, so I just screw it back on again. I have to put pull this thing apart from the top here, and we have a look inside of this crankcase. Now screws are, are removed. Got a tiny hole here. Got another filter. And there's the crankcase. So here you can see it, there's a piston with a pretty nice bearing on that, and there's a counterweight. Stops any vibrations. But it tries to stop the vibrations, but the whole compressor vibrates violently when it's turned on anyway. Should we have a look inside the sieve bed? I haven't seen so much videos of uh, how a sieve bed looks inside. So this will be pretty interesting. Instead of just throwing it out, I will take it apart first and see how it looks like. Yes, here's the bottom of the sieve bed. Here's all of the nitrogen that's trapped inside of this came out. Then it back flushes with oxygen and I have put these legs on it. So I can uh, make it stand on the table. So I remove the legs now. We can see the inlet here. It goes right here and in here somewhere, in the middle, I think. So I want to remove that, but it doesn't uh, want to get off, really. It's screwed in or something. Yes, it's screwed in, of course. Yes, there we go, here's the discharge. We can remove this black thing. Have a look underneath it. Yes, here we can see. Here are the two sieve beds. I think this is the oxygen reservoir here, and this is the from the compressor. But I wonder why this one is right here. So maybe this one is for the nitrogen, this one for oxygen. Hmm, we will see when you take it apart. We got six screws here. And maybe there's a big spring in this one. We will figure that out. And there must be a bunch of zeolite crystals. Maybe as you can see here, we got these safety torques, but that would, would not stop me. Always good to have the right tools. Goes in like perfectly in there. There are only two screws left. I have screwed out a bit. See if we got any springs in here. I don't really want this one to fly away. So yes, I think there's no springs here, so I'm going to remove the screws completely. I have this blue thing here, just in case something bad happens. I don't want to spill zeolite crystals all over the place. It should pop off. Oh, look at that. Here you can clearly see the reservoir tanks. 
you got this inlet tank here, you got the exhaust pipe here exactly, and there's the oxygen part, and there's the ceiling. And here are the filters, the zeolite crystals inside of them. That's very nicely made. Because now I've flipped it around and I removed the screws from here as well, where the valve pack is. And here's the oxygen reservoir here. You can see the pipe going into that. And this little thing here that goes to the pressure sensor. So it's now most of the screws are removed. I think there's a spring in here because this one wants to come out. Look at that, it wants to come out. It's actually pretty cute. Look at that. We got some springs in there. Oh damn, there are very fat springs actually. Look inside of that. There's a hell of a thick springs in there. Something terrible is going to happen, isn't it? There are very thick springs actually. Here we go. Look at the springs. And here we can see this part here with the oxygen part. The pipe going into that. Pretty thin uh, hole there. That's for a pressure sensor. There are the two. They are going to the valves. This one is for sort of a compressor. This one goes to the sieve filters. And this one in the middle goes to the nitrogen exhaust. And the only thing this one got was the intake going in here and the nitrogen discharge. Works now, see what that one is. I forgot to look in this direction. We got the oxygen, of course. This one blows air into the sieve filters this way and the oxygen comes out from these holes there. And goes to this plastic thing, which is like a check valve. Yes, and if you are familiar with zodiac signs, this looks like a can cancer sign. You can remove them like this. It's a bit tricky. But yes, here we've got the sieve filters. Yes, and here's the top of the sieve filter. If I remove this uh, plate here, we can see all the small granules of zeolite crystals in there. Look at that. This is amazing. These crystals here can actually remove nitrogen from the air and enrich oxygen with it. Isn't that amazing? They would like. So I'm gonna try a thing. I'm gonna take some crystals here and put it inside of this one. I think they should react with water and give out some heat. So there's the crystals in some water. That didn't work. So as now we have seen inside of this sieve filter and these different uh, uh, reservoir tanks. This one was for oxygen, this was for the intake from the compressor, and this was for the exhaust. So we have to put them back together again. So as now we know how it looks inside of a sieve bed like this. Let's have a look at this ox oxygen sensor. Yes, the first thing I can see on this oxygen sensor is a XTR1, which can be a transmitter. And on this side, I can see the RIS01, or RIS, or REC, like receiver, receiver one. And here we got a pair of fine wires, like R33, which can be a, like a temperature sensor. And it's a double-sided 
circuit board with the main chip set here with the crystal and got the regulator and the big oxygen sensor this looks actually like on the ox <laughs> here's the oxygen sensor this looks like a ultrasonic transducers yes I really need to use some brute force and a hacksaw is it called hacksaw actually yes it's called hacksaw so yes I could open it up at last and yes we got ultrasonic transducers and that's the temperature sensor in the middle I think Yes, oxygen has, I think, has another kind of like a speed which the sound is traveling at. And air has something else because there's so much nitrogen in there. So yes, it's maybe some kind of temperature sensor. Let's measure that. Sixty-nine kilo ohms. I put my finger in there. Yeah, it's, it's going down. It's a temperature sensor in there. It is a pretty accurate NTC thermistor. Yeah, that was quite nice. A ultrasonic oxygen sensor. I would like that. Let's have a look what this thing is. This was uh, after a compressor. Let's see if it's a dryer filter. I think I need to use my hacksaw on this again. Yes, that was a bit disappointing. I thought it was a dryer filter, but it looks like a normal filter actually. It's pretty dirty. Didn't the HEPA filter help anything? What do we got inside of here? Yes, it's a normal help filter. Just a normal paper filter actually. Nothing special. That was a bit disappointing. I thought it was a dryer filter. But obviously it's not. Yes. That was all for today, I think. Not so much else I can do with this oxygen concentrator. So I yes, hope you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching.